today's episode, we take a look. Can pies do the unthinkable at Icon Park in the first week in the opening fixture of AFLW? How will the Bulldogs get on at the home of St Kilda? They're back to full strength. Can the Demons keep up the hopes of their great football club or will Gold Coast continue to impress? In their second year now, the Eagles looking to really cement a good second year. How will they get on against many people's favourites, the Crows? Much fancied Kangas take a short trip to GMHBA to face the Cats. A lot of changes down at Punt Road, but will they have a different change of form as they host the Brisbane Lions at the Swinburne Centre? And finally, much fancied Frio Dockers, they entertain GWS Giants. How will they get on at the Fremantle Oval? Hello everyone and welcome to the Pommy Wrap of the week and obviously finally we've got a bit of footy. How good's that? You can't even fall off, can you? And obviously we'll start today as the highlights roll of Cowden versus Collingwood. Now, much was fancied of this game and obviously Cowden had such a good year last year. They really went into this year with their hopes high. Collingwood on the other hand, a lot of work to do. They showed a bit, signs are there, can they go one better? And unfortunately for the Blue Girls, it was a case of that the Collingwood game plan was just executed to within an inch of perfection, really. And they always say, don't they, the old footy saying, you can't win a game in a quarter, well, you certainly can lose it. The first half was absolutely torturous for the Blue Girls. And the Magpies, much to the credit, absolutely smashed it out of the park. There was very little answer from the Carlton girls until really in the second half where they dominated the third but left themselves so much to do. There was a few stages of fights with Brianna Davy and Madison Prasparkis having a set two but aside from that it was a case of Livingston absolutely dominating for the, blue, for the Magpies and they came away with the chocolates. The game was highlighted with two cases of absolute intercept genius from Charlotte Wilson for the Blue Girls and Rudy Sheila for the Magpies and they looked it was a real defensive battle for both sides however the execution like we say the game plan the chance of funneling the ball through the middle to look for them intercepts Magpies really peeling the girls off they led from 13-6 at half time and they never really looked in doubt the girls did threaten the Blue Girls but all in all, too much work to do. A kind of a non-event fourth quarter meant that, unfortunately for us Blue Baggers, the Magpies got on top. It was a tough game, really, to watch. There were some standout performances from both sides. In the end, obviously, I would say that Bonocchi, Molly and um, Sheridan, they really were a class apart. And although there was some individual moments of brilliance for the Carlton girls, obviously Prasparkis, Egan and Wilson shining, Hoskin popping up with a late goal, and obviously famous Carlton name, McKay, she really did have a good game. And some signs from Mimi Hill. Obviously Carlton had a few injuries though, and they'll be looking to bounce back next week when they go up against the Western Bulldogs. St Kilda hosted at the RSEA Park, Western Bulldogs. Now these are both sides who are sides who were very young and look like they've got a bit about them. A little bit of Hutzba for the AFLW. And this was an absolute ripping contest. It's two sides that really did show that excitement that is coming through both their systems. Tanya Smith, she got the goal on debut, and it was an absolute belter from start to finish. Isabel Huntington, though, for the Bulldogs, she was an absolute massive pick. And if you look back to my earlier show when we did the preview, we were talking about these former number one picks really beginning to show something. It did come out, though, early. St. Kilda did really set the standard earlier. There was a nice passage of play with McCarthy setting up a goal for Kate Sherlow and Patriarchos. And really, it was... It looked like Saints were going to run away with it. The Bulldogs did fight back later towards the end. But I think much of the story was about the wonderful father-daughter father little story 
you had Nathan Burke up against his daughter, Alice Burke, who had a really impressive debut. She may be diminutive, but she did show signs. She really uses a small frame well, and she really looks like she's going to be quite the get for St. Saint Kilda. Obviously, we know as well, Caitlin Griezlin, she was as a powerhouse and she's definitely going to be someone that you're going to be looking forward to she started the year as she meant to go on dominated early doors in the end it was the St Kilda girls who got up 8-3 51 playing 6-6 42 goal kickers obviously you know Griezler had two Gutteridge had two and that's going to be good signs for St Kilda their forward line and their midfield is starting to link up well the doggies we know everyone took a turn here too good had two Huntington had two Blackburn had two for me, I thought the best on ground was Huntington, Blackburn and too good for the Doggies. And I think for St Kilda, I think you've got to look at Patriarchios. She was brilliant. Smith and Griezler, they were absolutely phenomenal for them. Obviously, next week is a different case of events. Both of them have got tough competition. St Kilda head to Arden Street and obviously... The doggies, they entertain the Blue Girls at Witten Ovo. Should be exciting. Two good games, but really there was a lot to take out for both sides. But St Kilda just getting the better end of the rubber of the green. Then we had the Gold Coast versus Melbourne. Now, Gold Coast was superb last year. And it was really a masterclass from Paxman and that sublime midfield that they have that really did set it up for them. Um, Lily Meathan, she was absolutely terrific. Ellie, Eliza McManara as well. She really showed a lot as well. She's got a really good engine, bit of a turn of place, offering them some width. And Sarah Perkins as well. Former D, former Crow, really put on a show. She looks some sort. She's a she's a real strong presence up there. She loves the goals as well. You saw the celebrations. And really, it was kind of split into that. You know, them three quick goals in the second quarter from Melbourne for the goal course. And it's just that little ill discipline from them. They are a young side. We've got to remember that. They are new. Exciting, though, moving ahead. A lot of good signs. And I would say that the Gold Coast girls are a hell of a lot closer to a flag than the Gold Coast men at the moment, just because of the way they play. They are a really exciting. Obviously, Gold Coast, they've got some good players there. Perkins had two. Stanton, Kasler, and Perry, they propped up the scoreboard as Gold Coast finished 5-5 five and five for 35 Versus Melbourne, who were phenomenal. Cunningham 2, Hore 2, um, Petreski 2, Zanica, Mithen and Heath with one apiece. They finished 9-2 and two for 56. And for me, I thought the best on ground for Gold Coast. Perkins fought Stanton and I thought Hearns were absolutely phenomenal for them. Real good signs for them. Melbourne, obviously, it's hard to say, but you know, you had Cunningham. Mithen and Paxman, they were absolutely brilliant. Really got them the win. A little bit of an injury concern with Gold Coast moving into next week with Bradfield. She looked like she did a knee towards the end of the game. Obviously, the Ds now, they host Richmond at Casey Fields next Saturday. Should be, a, should be a game that they'll win that one. Richmond, obviously, still kind of a what if. And then Gold Coast, obviously, they come to Melbourne and they play Collingwood, who just beat the girls. That is a winnable match. Collingwood are no slouch and they were really impressive. But it'll be interesting to see how Gold Coast game plan of really hit hard comes along versus Collingwood's more control game style. The Eagles versus the Crows. Now, the Eagles are... Eagles are a tough one to judge because they have some talent there. But really, when they come up against the class that you've got, when you've got Randall, you've got Woodland, and you've got Aaron Phillips, who was an absolute beast this game, really opening up. It's going to be a tight vote for the BNF this year for this competition because Aaron Phillips will be up there. Another one who really impressed for Adelaide as well was Ebony Marinov. 21 disposals, five of them were clearances and a goal. She was absolutely dominant in the centre of the park. That being said, though, the Eagles will have a lot of things to really get excited about. Dana Hooker, 19 and 3 clearances. Swanson, 17 touches and 5 clearances. They were actually leading the clearance break at the break. And there was times that they did threaten to get on top. The thing is, though, that Crows play a wonderful brand of free-flowing, really attacking football. And although there were signs there from the Eagles, it does show that... 
the class from them to the Crows is high. There is some signs, though, for the Eagles that they should be positive. Obviously, you know, the Crows, they have a nice sustained break before they play Fremantle. And obviously, West Coast head up to play GWS. So there's a game that they may hear might, might be better. Obviously, West Coast, though, Bowen and Kelly kicking the goals for them. Adelaide, though, Phillips 2, Woodland 2, Marinhoff, Jones, Considine and Bedell one apiece. For me, the best on ground, Swanson, Hooker and Kelly for the West Coast Eagles. They were very good and showed a lot of signs moving forward that they've got a good structure there. Adelaide, though, Phillips, Marinhoff and Randall, to me, class above, particularly Phillips. Aaron Phillips, welcome back, my lovely. You're an absolute superstar. They ran out winners, obviously. Adelaide, 8-8 for 56. They played West Coast, 2-6 for 18. Then we went to the GMHBA and this was a case of ruthlessness from the North Melbourne Kangaroos. Absolutely running wild. It was Hulkamania in the 80s here and it was kind of tough for them because the Roos are a dominant side. We know when they get on top they literally hurt them and there was times that it looked like a training drill and you could see that, you know, the Geelong, they, they don't have that strength and that depth in the defence. And King took the Michaela Strachan, she did. Usual people as well, you know, Emma Kearney, Ash Riddell, Jenna Brunson, um, Ellie Gavalis as well. She chipped in with three goals. And it's kind of an awkward situation when you look at them because the class is so big. North look a threat. There were some performances this weekend that, you know, the early season favourites will start to look at. Because Adelaide and the Roos were ruthless. Absolutely ruthless. Um, Emma King, though, geez, eight disposals, nine hitouts, three goals. She's an absolute superstar. And in the end, it was kind of foregone. Three goals for, three goals for King, three for Gavalis, two for Garner, ED. Abagento and Ashmore, they all got a goal. O'Connor getting the sultry goal for Geelong. North Melbourne ran out 11-5 11, for 71, playing Geelong's 1 for 3 for 9. And best on ground for me, King, Garner and Kearney. I thought they were absolutely phenomenal. And Kearney just puts out Gavalis there. And for me, the girls... It, there was not much to write home about really for Geelong, but there was some individual performances. I thought both McDonald girls did really well, and I thought Purcell, they would probably be in my best on the ground for them. Tough one, though. Now the Cats travel to Brisbane. It could be a winnable game, but obviously it's going to be tough. When it, It's a very morale-deflating defeat. Obviously, the Ruse, though, they get to go and host St. Kilda. That should be a belting game, that, because both sides are going to be tough. And also, they're not going to get the luxury they did against the Geelong backline. Should be a ripping game, and I can't wait to see it. The Richmond girls, then, they entertained the Lions, and it was, it was, it was, it was poor conditions. You've got to say it wasn't the easiest performance, but Brisbane's experience and real maturity really showed in this one, and they just moved the ball ever so fluently, and they were obviously in that kind of. It was, it was a tough game, really, when you watch this. Um, Brisbane threatened early doors, but Richmond did really have the rub of the green at times. They really did look on top. But it was just that pressure from Brisbane. Brisbane really used it well, forced them into mistakes. And it's a tough one. It is a real tough one for that. Obviously, you know, the Lions as well, they blooded quite a lot of youngsters. Bell Dawes, 21 touches. Um... Obviously, as well, Tahelia um, Hickey, she was absolutely brilliant in the rook. And it was a really impressive debut for C Courtney Hodder as well. Really impressive debut. Um, Harriet Cordner, though, she was one of the highlights for the Tigers. Um, Ellie McKenzie as well, another one who really did put it out and really show something there. Um, obviously, Bodie as well up forward for Brisbane Lions was phenomenal. In the end, Brisbane 5 11 for 41, played Richmond's 1 for 6. Wakefield kicking the only goal for Richmond. Bodie with two, Hodder, Hickey and Davidson with the goals for Brisbane. Brisbane obviously on top. For me, Brisbane best on. I thought um, Dawes, I thought Grider and I thought Conway were absolutely phenomenal. They would be my votes. And then for Richmond, obviously, I thought Conti, McKenzie and Dempsey really did show a lot there. Really good games all around there. I mean, it was a tough one though. Richmond now, they will face the Melbourne Demons at Casey. Always tough. Brisbane, hoping to go 2-on-2 two two against a very shaky Geelong outfit. 
They should feel confident, though. It is... It, it should be a no-brainer for Brisbane. Brisbane did look good. And obviously, you know, a lot of signs there as well for Brisbane that this young group of girls is ready to take that next step in this competition. Finally, then, we finish with the Dockers, who they entertained at GWS. And they really took off where they finished last year. An absolute resounding victory for them. And it was... It was kind of an emotional game, this. There was that wonderful touching tribute to Jacinda Barclay, who tragically passed away last year. And there was a lot of beautiful moments. But Frio really did look to put on a show. Gemma Houghton absolutely tearing it apart with three goals. And the Dockers really displayed their dominance. Kira Bowers, 21 touches, 9 tackles. Jasmine Stewart, 15 and 4 clearances. Frio's girls really got on the edge. Ka Cara Antonio as well. She's just that absolute vital clog. She's the glue that holds it together. Um, and they've got a really talented group of girls here. Fremantle will do some damage. Um, it's their ability as well just to mix it up. Fremantle's girls have avenues to score throughout of it. They've also got a strong midfield. Goals can come from there. And also at halfback as well. They can really penetrate lines and really put a bit of pressure on you. There was some moments though for GWS. Performances from Barker and Schmidt obviously a real highlight. And McKinnon chopping in there. And Schmidt as well, her goals are going to be so important. She does look to really be evasive. And it's going to be a tough one for GWS because I kind of think that there's some, a few gaps missing in their list. All in all, though, it was a decent performance against a very strong Fremantle side. Fremantle, obviously, 8 goals, 10 behinds for 58, playing GWS is 4 and 4 at 28. Houghton with 3, Duffy with 3, Antonio and Hyde propping up the scoreboard with one apiece. And GWS, Schmidt, Beeson, Deese, Davis and Bennett with the goals for them. Obviously, best on ground for me, Houghton by away. Bowers and Antonio would make up my three for Freer. And I thought Beeson, Schmidt and McKinnon were absolutely phenomenal for GWS. Tough games for both sides. GWS, they face the West Coast Eagles, which they will fancy. But obviously, the West Coast Eagles will see that there is a bit of a vulnerability in GWS's in defence, but it is a game that you'd expect them to win. And Fremantle, as we know, probably have the tie of the round against Adelaide on the Sunday. And in Adelaide, it's going to be a tough game for the girls. But this Fremantle team is absolutely stacked. That is the week in full. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you've enjoyed this little segment. We'll be doing this throughout the season for the men's as well when they kick off. But until next time, palm out.